But I first learned design when I was 15 and I met a couple on holiday. Uh, she was deaf and the husband was deaf and blind. And then I didn't know how to communicate with them. And as the week went on, I, I felt like I wanted to learn something to understand what they were saying. So um, when I came back, um, I joined the signing course, I did level stage one, yeah. and that's kind of like I first started getting interested in it. And now I use it every day at work, because it's part of my job. Where I work is a centre for deaf and blind people, and but they've now just changed the name to Coherent Vision. And we have lots of people from different organisations within the sectors. So we've got um, interpreters who go out and support deaf people from different places. Then we've got the communication service where I work, and they um, support people with learning disabilities, with communication, with visual communication. And then I work in the symbol service, which is making symbols to make information accessible for people who can't read, so I've got little, like, little symbols. There's different levels of deafness, like you've got somebody who's profoundly deaf, that, that they would use BSL, whereas if you had somebody who's hard of hearing, they wouldn't consider themselves to be deaf. It's, it's like um, different sort of tiers. You've got um, visually impaired, um, profoundly deaf, um, and then hard of hearing. And so somebody with hard of hearing wouldn't necessarily sign, they would, uh, use lip patterns or um, get support. Um, They're more likely to be lip reading. Than yeah, yeah, than, than, than use the sign language. Yeah. So it's like, for sign language is definitely the, the language of the profoundly deaf people. Um, and like a lot of the deaf people that I work with would say that, um, that their language is a language in its own. If you go to Ireland, again, their, their language is different to England, but somehow they are able to communicate. It still, still works. It still works, yeah. But I know when I went to Romania, I couldn't speak the language, but I used sign language to communicate, and somehow we made it. And, that, and it was just kind of like, it's more visual, really, isn't it? It's kind of like your body language, I suppose, your facial expressions, but it wasn't really sign language as such, but it was kind of like using visual language that um, sort of helped us to communicate somehow. Yeah. I mean, the future sign language is, you know, it's becoming more and more out there now. You see it on television more, you know, it's, you know interpreters are there all the time. Do you think, um, do you think that the technology will progress where they can replace people's hearing altogether? I'm not sure about that. I mean, <laughs> the way the world's working today, anything can happen really. I mean, the latest iBooks has come out, hasn't it? Yeah. It's gone from one thing to another. I mean, I know, I know the hearing aids have improved over the years because um, some of our people have got uh, ele um, little ones that you can't see. Yeah. Because some people are very conscious of the hear hearing aids. Like in the past, it's like really big and chunky in, that, in your ear, but now they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that could happen, you never know really. You never know who's, who's going to develop what. Do you think that if that technology did develop, that, um, that sign language would be made redundant? Or do you think it would still serve a purpose? Oh no, I'd definitely serve a purpose. Mm. For deaf people anyway, I don't know about yeah. um, hearing sort of signs. But... Alright, that's good. Yeah. Alright, that's cool. <laughs> Do you think that um, like, the people that, that have to use sign language or that are hearing impaired and stuff tend to be more um, visual thinkers as well as visual communicators? Um, yeah, but my, my friends found me deaf. I hear little boys, one, and he's hearing. But he, he, at the age of one now, is learning sign language. And, like, he's just picking it up from his mum. Like, it's becoming a sort of natural way of him to communicate when he's with his mum. He'll sign when he's with other people. He'll, he'll talk, yeah. and it's just like it's just amazing, really, that um, somebody so small uh, has started to, started to learn a new language. I mean, like he's got to grow up. You know, been able to do sign language and because um, both his parents are deaf. Um, yeah. And again, you've got like um, hearing par hearing parents with deaf children, same sort of thing. They tend to sort of do everything they can to make sure the child gets the right sort of education and it's as visual as anything. She lose a lot when you, you can't hear. I mean, I'm deaf myself, but what I've heard, I miss out on a lot, so they rely on sort of the visual to stay in touch with things.
what do you think about um, about it as a about sign language as a communication technology, like and where it, where it started and where it's come from, like how it how it originated. I suppose somebody out there, I don't know, I don't really know when it began, but I know somebody, obviously somebody out there wanted to be able to communicate and, and found their own way of doing it, I think. It's like, it's like, like me going to Romania, I wanted to communicate with these people, but I couldn't, so I used every bit of body language that I could think of, and somehow we managed to get, well, it wasn't total communication, but there was something there, we were able to, to get by on. Oh, yeah. Do you think that, um, by learning, like, baby, like encouraging baby signing in children with hearing, it may slow down the development with speaking, with like spoken word language. Because no, I think it would develop it because, like, if you, if, if like the babies, they haven't, if they haven't learned how to speak yet, but they found another way of communicating, then it's all good. But do you not think that they may find it? They can say all they want through sign language, and then not find a need for. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think sort of like it's kind of like just a starting point, isn't it? To kind of develop the language as they get when they're able to actually say words, yeah. rather than just you know, point at something maybe. Yeah. <laughs>